need to know and let's do not forget that most of the time brands are spending 14 percent of their total budgets into content production one of the challenge brands are facing is about the ip because today there are a lot of software that you know are using data and they are not rewarding creators which is i think wrong i mean of course we need to start we need to explore entrepreneurs need to invest but let's do not forget that it's very important to reward the creators you know the creative class the people that are creative you know, and, to, and tomorrow, probably creators and credit gravity will be potentially the most important thing that an artificial intelligence uh, will be not able to do, you know, because this is absolutely unique. It's a blend of different, you know, content, but creativity is key. It's a huge market today that we are exploring and trying to bring solution. Welcome to Beyond Luxury where we explore the evolving intersection of innovation and tradition within the luxury sector. I'm your host, Carlotta Rodben. Today, we're diving into the world of Massimo Moretti, the CEO and founder of Itac. Massimo stands at the forefront of emerging technology, creativity, and luxury, offering a fresh perspective that bridges the gap between traditional consultancy and forward-thinking innovation. Join us as we delve into how Massimo's visionary approach at Itac is not just predicting the future of luxury, but actively shaping it with each project and collaboration he does. Massimo, thank you so much for being here with us today. You're joining us from Paris, uh, and I'm currently having you in the Apple Studios. So thank you for being here with us, um, for joining Beyond Luxury, and for opening up to this conversation. I'm very excited about it. And um, also really looking forward to hearing about everything you've been working on since you're really at the cusp of all cutting edge technologies and content and creation these days. So why don't you start a little bit from the beginning? How have you gotten to where you are today? And give us a little bit of the glimpse and kind of the hot topic of maybe um, you being on French Apprentice as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carola, for, for having me. It's a, it's a real pleasure. So yeah, I started like I was 20. Uh, in The Apprentice, uh, so the, the American TV show initially with, with Donald Trump, but I did it. I was in a in a French uh, French edition of The Apprentice, so it was a very interesting uh, TV show actually. So I was the youngest of the you know the youngest in the team, but it was like so so incredible to experiment uh, uh, TV. So it was not in luxury, not in, uh, in technology, but it was definitely a fantastic experience. So, uh, and, um, and yeah, just after that, I, st I started to, um, I was, I mean, the reason why my, uh, let's say, background is, uh, uh, I think, particular, it's because I did my study and I was uh, working at the same time during uh, five years. So, uh, so yeah, I started with The Apprentice Show. After that, I was in a, in a business school uh, and I did a specialized master in innovation and transformation at Centrale Supélec, a uh, French engineering school. So I was always uh, passionate by cutting edge technologies, innovation, and of course, luxury. Um, and uh, it's interesting to see today, like the evolution of technology and especially uh, special computing, uh, because I started seven years ago in VR and AR. Uh, so we were calling that also XR, not really special computing at the time, but it's more or less the same. And it was very, hard to convince brands you know to experiment new immersive and interactive experiences you know with the the, the glasses or even in AR so I was one of the the first guy trying to convince luxury brands to experiment that in, in Paris seven years ago but it was very hard um, so we were experimenting we call that web AR which means with a, just one link you can experiment anything in, in augmented reality so it was very, very challenging at, uh, at that time. Um, and uh, yeah, this is like how I started to work in between the world of luxury and uh, cutting edge technologies. And uh, after that, I was doing some consulting for uh, with the former luxury marketing director of Pernod Ricard. So we were working with a fantastic brand uh, such as uh, Ruinard, the French uh, champagne brand. Uh, and uh, and it was very interesting because Ruinard is probably uh, the, the the French maison. Uh, the Champagne that uh, started to work with artists, uh, starting to work with uh, Alphonse Mucha uh, around 200 years ago, more or less. So uh, it was uh, very interesting to help uh, Renard to 
uh, let's say, reinforce the engagement into the arts world. Um, and especially because today and more than ever, it's very interesting to see that uh, the engagement, not just in technology, but also in art and culture, uh, most of the luxury brands are today more than ever engaged in, the, in, the, in this field because today, more than ever, again, brands definitely needs to be cultural agents, which means going, um, let's say, um, you know, not just being able to sell any kind of uh, expensive product, but uh, working more on storytelling and bringing something, you know, this magic touch that makes the that makes the brands uh, absolutely unique. So, um, so today, this is exactly where I am. So I mean, in between the world of luxury, technology, art and culture, and always investing with my uh, fantastic team into insight, research and developments. Uh, so, and this is a, this is very challenging, but it, this is absolutely uh, beautiful working with a uh, brilliant people and brilliant brands, uh, such as uh, Heavy Image Group, Richmond Group, Mercedes Benz, L'Oreal, Pooch Group as well. So um, this, is, this, this is like a dream <laughs> today for me. So uh, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You've, you really are hitting all of the top luxury brands in all uh, verticals. So it's, it's pretty impressive what you've um, been able to do until now. And only the things that are in front of you are, are going to be way bigger and better. I know it. Um, in terms of content production, because yep. you're working a lot with technology, art and luxury, yep. and all of this uh, brings a lot of questions on what kind of technologies push uh, creation to another level. Can you yep. talk about yep. your idea of generative AI and yep. its role in doing all of this? Wow, that's uh, the, the multi-million, uh, even the billion dollar question, I think, because <laughs> most of the brand we're discussing with, there is like, uh, there is like, I think, mean, two big challenges for any brands in the world today. It's first technology and especially AI, and of course, sustainability and impact uh, project. This is like potentially the, the two big, big subjects, and I can understand why, definitely. And this is also a role to guide them to, be like uh, step breath, avant-garde, you know, of what's going on, you know, doing a lot of research, you know, being sure that they're in touch with the right startups, the right entrepreneurs that are bringing solution. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think my view on, so let's start with uh, generative AI. So today we have like fantastic software uh, that allow brands to, let's say, prototype, especially, um, you know, uh, faster than ever, any kind of content, you know, especially like, course in the luxury but also in architecture in design so content production in general will be completely disrupted by generative ai uh, and we need to know and let's do not forget that most of the time brands are spending 14 percent of the total budget into content production so which means we, we are it's um, it's a huge market today uh, that we we exploring and trying to bring solution the challenge is today i mean there are many different challenges but i think one of one of the challenge we're not facing is uh, about the IP, because today there are a lot of software that you know are using uh, data and they are not rewarding creators, which is I think wrong. I mean, of course we need to start, we need to explore, they need to. In, I mean, entrepreneur need to invest, but let's not forget that it's very important to reward the creators, you know, the creative class, the people that that you know are creative. You know, and, to, and tomorrow probably creators and credit gravity will be potentially the most important thing than uh, let's say an artificial intelligence uh, will be not able to do you know because this is absolutely unique today it's a blend of it's a blend of different you know content but creativity is key more than ever especially for uh, for luxury or even any kind of brands so uh, I think that this challenge is absolutely fundamental for brands and we're exploring through ETAC, uh, my agency, we're exploring like how to, you know, to help brand being sure that they're taking the right decision. They're at the forefront of innovation, especially on content production. Uh, so we're doing a lot of R&D uh, for many, many brands uh, and helping them to prototype, helping them to develop campaigns with uh, generative AI. So this is uh, very challenging, but this is absolutely um, interesting. And we're staying I think we need to stay very humble because, you know, we're doing a lot of R&D with brands. You know, we're co-building. You know, some brand, they're asking us, okay, what's the solution? How we can do that, this or that? Well, uh, guys, let's explore it together. We didn't have all answers, you know. We know like a lot of startups. We know a lot, a lot of 
we have a lot of tips, you know, uh, in order to to drive them and being sure they're taking the right decision. But there's still a lot of R and D to do for sure. Um, so um, so yeah, we we're working on this uh, as a lot of uh, you know uh, agencies or consulting company or entrepreneurs that are building fantastic startups. So um, so yeah, this is a this is again the billion dollar question uh, a lot of people are trying to solve. <laughs> Absolutely. And how are you guiding these brands? Can you give us some examples on, on how you're guiding them to create maybe generative AI helped campaigns um, and really using this human and technology part um, together? Yeah, that's 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 a good question. And thank you for asking. So all starts, I mean, with our approach, so we're doing a lot of education, trainings, being sure that the teams for in any kind of company, in the beauty, in the automotive, in luxury, in fashion, know the tool and how to use it, you know, because I think I did have the exact number, but around 80 million jobs um, will disappear and more than 90 million jobs will, you know, will be created uh, uh, close to AI uh, these next few years. So it's very important to, to uh, as a brand, I mean, if I were a brand, I will spend, invest a lot of budget, being sure that my team, are aware and know how to use, you know, uh, these kind of tools, you know. So tomorrow we will have, I don't know, graphic de- augmented graphic designer, um, augmented product uh, product designer, uh, augmented marketer, et cetera, et cetera. So, so the key success factor for sure will be the level of knowledge that, let's say, brand manager or an- anybody in the company will be trained and will be able to use um, you know, with a good level of knowledge, these new tools. So we all start with training them and being sure they are able to to use these tools. This is like the the first steps. And after that, you know, we of course we're doing a lot of um, training around inspiration, creativity, uh, and technology. Of course, uh, so it's more around workshop, you know. Um, and after that, we're co-creating with teams, you know, um, new campaign. Uh, investing in R&D, showing them, you know, wh- what can we do with this kind of tool. So, yeah, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, we're using this approach with a lot of brands, actually. That's amazing. And um, to push a little bit on the technology side, we have generative AI as a very yeah. big tool. Mm-hmm. Um, but to go back on kind of something that you were talking about before on rewarding um, the creators and their yeah. creations as a whole, can you talk a little bit about Web3 technologies and blockchain and how maybe that can support that um, recognition and that reward to those creatives? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. And I, I think today there are not a lot of solutions that are um, blending both uh, content production through generative AI and blockchain solution. Uh, so I started to, to work in Web3 because I was convinced that the ownership and decentralized uh, new economy is definitely something interesting, like it or not, but this is here. And I think we, we're still building, uh, you know, infrastructures, uh, just like a few days ago, I was talking with a guy that uh, sold for a few millions fantastic NFT collection. And now so I'm, oh, we are, we are still very early stage. I'm working on a fantastic infrastructure for digital assets, how to move them from a place to another place, keeping the security uh, because there is huge uh, security, let's say, challenges. Uh, but going back on your question, yeah, I think today there is a there is a blue ocean for startups that are looking for to bridge the world of uh, content creation through AI or let's say generative AI in general and blockchain and being sure that all creators or all people that are bring that are creating anything will be rewarded. And and you're right. And today I didn't have this answer. I don't know exactly um, how startups will answer to this question, but definitely there is. Um, a bridge to create between these two technologies. Um, and uh, yeah, there is a fantastic opportunity for startups that are looking forward to create new uh, new product, definitely. 
It's great that you serve as this uh, facilitator and like booster to the to luxury companies working with um, these startups that you mentioned a couple of times on looking for startups that are answering to questions. Yeah. I totally uh, am in line with that kind of mindset yeah. of bringing in really creating this open innovation ecosystem yeah. um, to to bring the best uh, in class thoughts, ideas, exactly. and uh, technologies. Um, so love that, and yeah, I think that's is one of the biggest questions, right? on what, how can we make sure that these creators are, um, keep being augmented, A, in the right ways, and B, keep getting rewarded in, in a way that they deserve. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, a few days ago, I was talking with a graphic designer and, uh, and I asked him to create something in, in 3D and, uh, and, and uh, I asked him the cost and it was like quite, uh, quite high. And, um, so I asked one of uh, one of my prompt engineer in the team to create something more similar, and he did it in a few hours. You know, it's a very interesting level of quality. And I sent it to uh, the 3D guy, and the guy uh, told me, "Wow, Massimo, you did like I mean, the guy that created this was is really good." I said, "Yeah, he's using <laughs> he's using AI. It's really bad. And the guy told me, "But what I'm supposed to do then?" He was like. And me, I, I mean, of course, I, I, I know what we can do with AI, but I really realized that the, the impact of, you know, people that were doing that with a very good quality, of course, but that's a high, quite high price because they're very good at, you know, so we are assisting um, this, this shift, you know, in between something that was like uh, quite hard to do but expensive, and something thanks to the generative AI that that will dramatically cut the cost, and that's the reason why agency, included us, you know, uh, are re we're really thinking how to reinvent, you know, and especially the big agency that that were producing, you know, content and were doing million and million thanks to that. It was their job, and then they were doing that perfectly most of the time, but. It, the costs were like very high and today agencies and brands are realizing that tomorrow we'll cut the cost, we'll increase potentially the, the creativity, we'll be able to produce uh, faster, more than ever. Yeah. And, and to we work on, on this, you know, working with maybe not like hundred people, but just 10 people that will do more or less the same thing, you know? So when you realize that you, you say, wow, yeah, we need to rethink the way that we, we working together and this, this is like, uh, to be a, to be honest, like this is really uh, impactful for all companies that that needs to to produce content in general, which which mean most of the company in the world, you know. So this is definitely a huge huge uh, subject and challenge brands are facing. And there is also there is also a, a very interesting uh, point to to keep in mind is how you will manage this transition, you know, because some people if they are not doing what they were doing yesterday, what they will be, what they are supposed to do today, you know? So that's the reason why training, education is absolutely key, you know, in order to, to improve the knowledge, the skills of these people that were doing that sometime for 10, 20 years, you know, how you help them, you know, to, to be trained and being sure that they're at the level of, you know, using these tools. So yeah, this is a very important challenge, I think, for, yeah, for, for brands. For corporates in general. Yeah, reinventing um, our skills and what we do with those skills. And exactly. if you're really good at 3D modeling, yeah. uh, maybe you have to learn how to be the best augmented 3D modeler and yeah. have 40 clients instead of four, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, so you will, you will every... cut the cost. Yeah, you, exactly. You're right. That's very interesting. You will cut the cost, right? So you will be like very attractive, but you will have more customers because you will be able to manage, you know, more customers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a fascinating topic, and I think uh, there's a lot of fear behind it, but really, I see it as a huge uh, window of opportunity for everyone. As you're saying, you know, a lot of times things are are externalized um, to to create, and then it comes back to the internal brand, and they have to change a bunch of things. There's so much back and forth, yeah, um, and yeah. today we're in the world of content, right? Creating content 
all the time in different mediums. And today's softwares have changed. Today's hardwares have changed. And I think we see it, you mentioned it at the beginning with extended reality, uh, MR, XR, VR, AR. We see it now with spatial computing kind of being a little bit more tangible with um, things like the Apple Vision Pro where we can say, okay, well, we have to create more content, how to do it. There's so many verticals of content creation today. It's so much to manage um, if we don't have help. So um, quite honestly, I see I see technology as a big lever uh, leverage to to help as well. Let's go into the digital passports realm because this is something you do a lot as well at Itac, and you guys are really good at working with the top brands in the world to really make sure to hone in that ownership, that provenance of the product and um, allow that authenticity to reign through. Can you go through the importance of digital passports for luxury industry today and how they are redefining transparency for the industry? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very interesting topic we're exploring with uh, many different uh, brands and especially with Richmond Group, for example. And, and yeah, definitely this is, uh, you know, when I started in blockchain and since I was passionate around into the world of luxury, art and culture, I was looking for which kind of solution, you know, will be relevant uh, for, uh, I mean, how blockchain will be able to solve and to create new use cases for, for brands. And definitely the digital passport product is probably one of the most interesting relevant use case uh, for um, for brands. And so I think one very interesting topic is, especially when we're talking for, uh, I don't know, we work, we're working with, uh, with Vachon Constantin, which is a 270 years old brand. Um, so of course, transparency, heritage, uh, transmission is uh, at the core, you know, uh, of the brands. So yeah, that's the reason why it's, it's very important. So how uh, you will, let's say, um, help brand to create this trans- transmission, you know, and blockchain is, is potentially is a solution thanks to digital passport product. Um, and the other topic that, that is absolutely fundamental is also uh, the second hand markets, especially in the watch industry that will represent around 40% uh, these next few years. So 40% you know, uh, I don't have the, the numbers in fashion uh, or in luxury goods in general, but for in the watch industry, it's absolutely mass- massive. So brands need to be aware. So that's the reason why brands uh, are working into uh, implementing this kind of, of solution. So what we were doing uh, for uh, the brands we were working with, it's how we can help them to make it desirable. You know, because it's useful uh, for sure. But how you help your your community, your clients, current clients, and your clients to get this? Uh, you know, I mean, you mean at the on the wallets or or, or like whatever uh, this digital passport product. So there is like a, also education to do with the the client in order to help them to integrate this logic of digital passport product. And um, an interesting uh, anecdote. So I was in a very famous uh, watch watch boutique. And so uh, there were like something wrong in, in, in the watch. So I decided to uh, ask, you know, in the boutique shop, so please, could you please change it? And the guy checked the, the watch and he said, okay, this is the, the right series number. I can uh, identify the watch. So he mm-hmm. asked me, listen, he asked me uh, the warranty, the physical warranty. I was like, sorry, the physical <laughs> warranty? You know, that's who uh, on the physical warranty, right? Uh, so this is obvious that, and especially the new generation to tomorrow, and thanks to the to the web, web 3.0, everybody, I mean, not everybody, but m- more, more and more people will directly integrate. So today we call that a wallet, you know? Or digital wallet and and my mom didn't have one my grandmom either so how you make you know this um uh talking blockchain and, and web3 how you will make this experience seamless and tomorrow you will you will have you know all digital assets inside wallets or something that that is safe secure and easy to use so today there is a it's a huge challenge for uh, for startups and for companies to integrate a seamless experience, which is mixing both web three. So you have like, you're using, you're leveraging blockchain technology uh, that allow you to be sure that the, this is like, you can fake it, right? So since it's inside the blockchain, but at the same time, it's very, you know, easy to use, seamless, etc. So uh, we're exploring with brands, you know, how to 
to answer to this challenge, uh, you know. So, uh, and we're still working with uh, with brands on the on let's say solving uh, this this uh, very important challenge, and especially again in the watch industry. That's a great um, anecdote because it's so true. Today yeah. we have such valuable items where you have like a piece of paper with a with a signature on it, written by pen, the serial number. It's really crazy. Um, I'd love for you to go in detail what it would look like to have a digital passport on your phone because a lot of, uh, or on your wallet that you can access through any device, computer or phone, right? Yeah, a yeah. lot of people, I think, don't um, understand fully what that could look like and therefore it's harder to conceptualize. And I think you would do a great job to explain what that is. Well, so actually there, there is like, a lot of manners, ways to, let's say, design or imagine uh, a digital passport product. So it could be like a QR code, which is, you know, linked to the product. So it's true today you have like challenges. So how you, you're sure that the product, I mean, this product uh, is really linked with this QR code, you know, so you, we're still doing a lot of R&D as well. Uh, with some partners in order to answer to this uh, to this challenge brain are facing. Uh, we have some solution actually because you have the series number so you can be sure that this series number is linked with the this uh, this core code. But tomorrow we even uh, will be able to integrate other technologies on some product. I can disclose for the moment because it's still confidential. But um, it's true that yeah tomorrow we'll have new ways to uh, connect, you know, the digital passport product with any kind of digital goods. Uh, so this is a very important challenge better facing because, you know, the the number of fake product is absolutely huge. I didn't have the numbers by, but we know that it's it's a very important market and, and brands are, uh, you know, facing this challenge, this challenge right now. Um, so we're working on, on some solution. But again, the idea is to make it very seamless uh, and also exciting for, for the consumer, right? So how you make it desirable for the consumer is not just like, you know, downloading an application and kind of, you know, it's, it's boring, you know, right. you don't want to download right. another application, right? So how you make it again, um, very seamless, seamless. And, and easy to use. So answering to your question tomorrow, it could be like, just like on your, on your wallet. For example, on my con based wallets, I, I own a different, you know, uh, digital certificates, uh, or even NFT, you know, uh, so they are mine. It's like inside the blockchain, etc. Uh, but yeah, it's true that today there are still some also in terms of UX and UI. There is a huge, huge curve of improvement because uh, Web3 was uh, was designed, I mean, Web3 infrastructure were, were designed by very tech guy. Uh, of course, there are more and more product, product people that, um, you know, working around the UX and UI, but uh, definitely this is something that, uh, uh, you know, we're working on it and, uh, and a lot of startups and big infra, um, you know, uh, companies are working in order to, to solve this. So, uh, but this is a very, very challenge, uh, challenging, uh, you know, moments actually. Yeah, there's like Coinbase and MetaMask and OpenSea and all of these different things. You should change fiat and all this jargon of right. There's a lot of uh, there's a barrier, a huge barrier to entry for a Web three. You need to like want to learn about it for you to learn the jargon and what gas is and what fiat is and what having an NFT means and how you actually buy it's one and how you transfer. Oh, my it's, God. It's, yeah. I so mean, then luxury and luxury brands, that's like the first thing that they say. What, 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 how is our client going to just jump into that and integrate into that? Um, and so, yeah, I think QR codes are honestly probably what we're all used to thanks to COVID because that's all we did for a while at restaurants. Yeah, and now exactly. when Everybody we get the, the physical <laughs> menu, we're like, oh, thank you. I, I honestly get so excited when I get a physical menu now. Um, but true, true, absolutely. Um, Massimo, there's a huge side of community also attached to Web3 um, and all of these digital assets we're talking about. Definitely. Can you deep diver, can you dive deeper into that yeah. and yeah. Um, tell us a little bit what these communities look like and what they give as a benefit to brands? 
Absolutely. So first of all, uh, you know, just before our interview, I was discussing with uh, our global head of insights and uh, we're discussing community and, and she told me uh, there is no brand with, with, without community. Right, which means like it's 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 the it's the core business, uh, and and it's very important to treat them, um, you know, and especially right now, I think uh, just after the COVID or even before, uh, we we were working around lo new loyalty program and how you you're keeping this relationship, uh, you know, with uh, with the brands and the importance of sales manager, boutique director. It's absolutely key today because this is your link. I mean, as a brand, this is your link with your consumer. Of course, you have you, you have like many different uh, many different um, ways uh, or channels to to be in touch. But you know, it's it's more nurturing to chat Facebook, Instagram, Discord. You can engage them uh, a bit more, you know, because there are like many different discussion channel. Uh, you have TikTok as well, but you're more, you know, uh, you're more pushing content, you know. So this is the thing that is interesting with Web three. So we are coming from audience. To a community, so this new way of you know, um, let's say managing your client, your current customers, you know, so how you how, how increasing the retention, so being sure that your current client will stay your clients, you know, so that that is a very very important point. So there is like a new way to rethink loyalty and not with boring point things, you know, like people don't care and especially high net trust individual, you know. So for I mean, with the brands we we are working with. Um, so trust Mercedes Benz, uh, Vachon Constantin, uh, Remova. So what's what's matter for high end brands, high end and aspirational brands, is how brands can create what money can buy. You know, mm -hmm. this is like the top of the top of luxury experiences, and and it's not like so easy because you know high net worth individual can afford a lot of things. You know, they can buy potentially like everything more or less, you know. So it, we need to be very creative, insightful in the way that, you know, brands are building, you know, the relationship with uh, their community, right? Uh, of course, like in the pyramid, you have like different level of customers. But I think as a brand, you need to treat them. Of course, some brands are trading like VVIP, so in, they're invited and Web3 was an opportunity, you know, to, to you know, unlock if you own this nft or this nft some incredible experiences so it was quite i mean this approach was quite uh quite interesting but do you do you really need an nft to unlock something you know uh so it wasn't it's it's another question but uh yeah today we're working a lot around this uh, this subject and uh, again i think um what's what's really matter is how you're keeping a physical relationship uh, with your with your your consumers and so events is very important dinner uh, experiences that money can buy as well so um, I think this is um, this is we're back to basics actually mm -hmm. uh, yeah there is nothing like a, you know it's not a revolution but it's very very important to consider uh, sometime uh, the, the basic points of how to keep a relationship and develop new relationship, especially with the new generation, how you engage them, you know, being sure that you're, um, you're like, uh, you're sharing with them the right message. And today, I think, as mentioned before, brands need to become cultural agents, which means not just pushing products or services. I mean, yeah, services, of course, but not just products. I mean, people are looking for way more than that today. And if we take if we take the example of Patagonia, why it's successful? Because this is a very engaged brand. You know, they are going way further rather than just like selling products, expensive or not. Even we don't care, um, but something with a real purpose. You know, mm -hmm. and I think this is what brands needs to um, you know to 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 be sure that they're they're answering to. The societal uh, challenges, uh, social, not, ju not just economical, but even maybe politics. You know, brands are not in are not uh, you know right. not really engaged into politics because it's hard, of course. Uh, but definitely, they need to have like they need to have a purpose that uh, that that resonates with their new with a new audience for sure. Which and this new audience is very let's say you can be wrong with them. You know, if not. <laughs> They will, uh, they will right. cancel your brand. <laughs> the cancel culture is real. Yes, exactly. absolutely. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I 
you bring incredible points up. Um, it's true that, especially when talking about high net worth individuals, yeah. um, they want what money can't buy. And honestly, going back to those basics that you're talking about, it's almost like we were on this digital route, all of us um, looking at Web 2. And now Web 3 is going to augment the way we interact with these brands yeah. on yeah. the new iteration of the internet. And then yeah. in person and back to basics is also going to be the way that we're yeah. going towards um, these high um, luxury experiences, which basically are touching the emotion and the human exactly. connection, which 100%. is 100%. sometimes is not key. expensive oh, yeah. at all, you know? Absolutely. No, seriously. I mean, you know, I like luxury because first of all, let's go back on the defi- on my definition of luxury. And I think luxury is, is also su- being surrounded by you know, of course, aesthetic, uh, but also ethics, you know. Mm. Uh, so this is very important. And especially when you're going to um, to, a, to a store, you know, and that's the reason why I was talking about the relationship with the store manager, boutique director, etc. It's because, you know, when you're sitting in, in the sofa, whatever, and there is someone that is very kind with you, bringing you coffee, you know, this is very comfortable. This is very nice. Mm. This is very kind. You know, there is this this moment with someone that, that is taking care of you, you know. So that's why also beauty, wellness is more than ever important, right? So that's the reason why also the customer relationship with the luxury brand is very important. It's because, you know, there is this, you know, this, this uh, it's an intimate moment with the brands, you know, uh, that bring something, you know, very very smooth, very nice. Uh, so this is like also why brands are, you know, um, important for people. So that's, that's, that's a very, very important, from my point of view, way to go uh, when it comes to strategy. So you need to be sure that you are taking care of your consumer. Now the, 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 the challenge is how. How are you taking care of mm-hmm. them, you know? Not just selling products. You know, it's a very transactional moment. And, and at the end, it's even... I personally, I'm not interested in having this transactional, uh, of course, you're wearing, you know, exp- some people are wearing like expensive, you know, watch or bags because it's a social statue, you know, it's, there is this challenge of desirability, etc. But I think the new generation, in order to convince them, and not just only the, the new, um, uh, let's say, generation, but also all previous generation are really, really conscious that, you know, they are waiting something more for the brands. Um, and, uh, and all of brands right now, that I'm not sure they are aware and are taking action to answer to this challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really heightened experience being really personalized to that to that certain individual that you're talking to and making them feel listened to and heard. Exactly, um, and like they belong, right? Uh, which is a huge, huge uh, component of the luxury industry. This feeling of belonging and belonging to exactly. a community, something bigger than yourself, right? Something that is aspirational and inspirational as well, which I think is exactly. an really, uh, important thing to point out. Yeah. Um, amazing. Massimo, if we're thinking about innovation and creativity and how they will really form and co-create the future of this industry, what would you say that you see in the future happening next five to 10 years on this? The question is around future of innovation and creativity. For community or With, in general? In general. In general. Well, again, as I mentioned before, creativity is absolutely key. This is what makes a brand different, of course, with the history, the storytelling of the brands. Uh, so that's the reason why also brands are uh, going back, uh, you know, from uh, sometimes too much cutting edge innovation. They're going back to physical experience with, with clients, etc. So... Um, so yeah, definitely. Cre- you, you can't be uh, an interesting and relevant and culturally relevant brand if you're not creative. And I think, well, I would be hard, but uh, these past few years, there, re- I mean, the creativity sometimes were like was a bit low. It's people, you know, brands are observing too much. Uh, you know, each other. Remember, like the logos and the bag were like copy mm-hmm. past, copy past, copy mm-hmm. past. You know, but where creativity is right and creativity as a brand is the faculty to take risks, you know, that's the reason why you are like, and, and I think some brands such as Prada um, or Miu Miu, you know, um, you know, they're very colorful, taking risks, doing some, some crazy 
dresses, crazy bags, you know, um, because uh, the way you dress it's is literally the 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 closer way to express your personality. That's why there is a a, a quote in French: "L'habit ne fait pas le moine." I don't know. Mm. I, we can translate that. <laughs> you want to translate translate for me? The clothes don't do the monk. Don't yeah. represent the monk. <laughs> exactly, which is sometimes absolutely false because um, this is a way that this is one way that, where people can express their personality, the singularity, um, and, uh, and et cetera. Again, it's both aesthetic and ethics, you know, inside, outside. It's, uh, it's, it's always the same. And I think like, uh, it's, it's very important to, to take, uh, to take this in mind. So creativity as a brand, again, going back on your question, mm. um, is, is, is absolutely fundamental. And I think brands in the future probably, uh, will need to take more risk. And, and positioning them with convictions, not just being, you know, you know, like, uh, being a brand of, of, uh, for everybody is, is, is not right. You know, you can't, you can't be pleasant. You know, some people like you, some other people don't like you, you know, yeah. because you have convictions, you know, and when, when you do, when you're doing some things with convictions, some people will like it and other people, whatever. <laughs> You know, so yeah, <laughs> you okay. need to engage, and that's okay, and that's okay, and that's okay, um, and brands need to accept that. That's a, that's the reason why I was before uh, talking about um, engagements, and and brands more than ever needs to be engaged mm. with their community and being engaged. You know, and when you're getting married and when you're taking engagements, it's an engagement. Of course, you can go back, but you you're doing something because you trust that. You know. Um, and if you never engage with nobody, I'm not sure in the future you will stay culturally relevant for um, for part of the audience uh, that that is waiting way more than uh, things in the past. I think. Yeah, and, and now that you're talking about cultural relevance and and creatives and artists, yeah. what do you think about brands um, partnering with? known artists versus emerging artists. Do you think that there's a trend on this in the future? What do you mean by known artists? Exactly. Emerging artists or yeah. known, like artists known, that sorry. we all know already? You know, personally, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously easy to partner with someone that is already very famous, right? This is the easy way right. to promote your brand. I mean, and- we saw it with Kusama and there's, was there an opportunity there to partner with someone that was merging, right? I can't disclose my, uh, what I'm thinking, but take talking engagement. I will take an engagement with you and for the audience. Um, well, <laughs> oh, it was, to be honest, it was one of the most successful activation, worldwide activation. What they did, it's absolutely massive. They can be proud of yep. it. You like it or not, because, you know, it's a uh, point with colors. This is, you know... Well, again, it's like in the heart. There is like different way to understand a piece of art. Of course, you have the aesthetic, so everybody can understand. You like it or not. After that, you, go, you, you, you deep dive. Okay, this is done by this artist. Okay, interesting. Now you know the artist. But, but why? What the story behind that? Okay, but why really this artist decided to do that? So you deep dive into and you start to really understand why this artist is working um, around this um, this. Uh, let's say, or artwork. Uh, and this is very interesting, but going back on uh, on what, what you mentioned before, I think it was a fantastic activation. And sometimes, uh, like in Asia, for example, it was very successful. Uh, in Europe, some people like it and some people tell me, I'm not sure it's relevant for the Vuitton I like, <laughs> you know? So it's also being culturally relevant means also, uh, and going back on, your, on our previous conversation, uh, you can be right for everybody. Again, some people will like it. Some people, you know, will think something different. So, um, again, it's, it's hard for brands to, uh, to, uh, be engaged with these artists or these artists. But what's matter? That's the reason why being sure that you know your consumer, your community is absolutely fundamental because it will allow you to being sure you, you're relevant for them. We don't care mm-hmm. if you're not relevant for others, but you're relevant for them. Right. For them. Right. So, and, 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 and I will give you my personal points. Now, I think the role of brands, again, is being engaged, which means supported new emergent artists. Of course, they're, they're maybe not well known, 
but you're doing something for good. Maybe the sales will be not like crazy, but at the beginning, uh, you will, I mean, your audience, your community will learn something uh, from you. And this is the role of brand also to educate people, which mean today, you, you, you know, these artists, but tomorrow, thanks to these brands, I know this artist uh, and mm-hmm. this community and this. So, so they are elevating me, they're elevating my knowledge, my cultural and artistic knowledge. Uh, I have a fantastic friend, she comes from Ghana, and uh, we're in Miami, our visit together, and she introduced me to um, uh, a gallery that come from uh, Ghana as well, I think. Uh, she introduced me to many people from, from Africa, you know, new gal- galleries, artists, collectors, and I was like, oh my God, I know nothing. I know nothing. I was like, of course, I know like some well-known African artists, but even like some artists that are super good, I was like, oh shit, I don't know them, you know? And I was, wow, I'm learning something thanks to her. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's important for brands, well-known or uh, let's say new emergent artists. I think the you, you can mix, you know, you can sometimes work with artists that, of course, that, you know, create something beautiful and potentially will increase the sales uh not just because they're famous but because it's it's just beautiful it's just relevant and sometimes you need to do something for good something that will elevate the brands and will help your community to be more knowledgeable than yesterday right and actually be a conductor of cultural uh, creations right absolutely yeah definitely definitely this is why i'm uh, i'm i'm uh, I'm very uh, insistent with the term cultural agents because this is the role of brands as well uh, to to be culturally relevant, but also creating you know something that that will help your audience to to be more knowledgeable, uh, to um, you know to increase uh, you know your taste sometime you know uh, and I like I think this is yeah one of the role of of brands uh, uh, for tomorrow. Amazing. Massimo, thank you so much for sharing all of this uh, amazing insight and information. Technology, innovation, creativity, community, it's all the hot topics right now, and you're working on all of them. So um, it was honestly an honor to have you. Thank you so much. Um, How can people follow you on social media or on the work that you're doing? Well, I'm, I don't know if I'm, I'm in the Gen Z generation, but more or less, let's say, so I'm <laughs> present on, on most of the platforms so uh, people can follow me. Uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn, so uh, Massimo Moretti on, uh, on LinkedIn for sure and uh, Instagram as well. So, yeah, I'm answering most of the time to, uh, to my emails. So, yeah, you can contact Amazing. me on LinkedIn especially. Great. Thank Thanks you so, so much, much. Yeah. and see you very soon. Fantastic. Thank you.